Ja sam već što rao. All right, we're here in San Diego on the 7th of May for the first show of the second leg of the tour. Is this the first show? Yeah. I know, it's the first show, really. Yeah. On this tour, what other cities have um, you seen? I saw them in um, Hartford, Hartford, Connecticut. I just moved out here, so I'm seeing them here now on this, on this leg. And how about you, bud? I've been out here three years. I saw them at Sports Arena this past tour when I came here. Yeah, that was the week of Thanksgiving, wasn't it? Yeah, but I've yep. seen them before. I used to live back east. I saw them in the Meadowlands and everywhere. And so what do you guys think of the new record? I'm kind of mixed about it. Really? Um, you know, I like the true classic Rush sound. Um, is it, are they regressing or progressing? And it's like, you know, it's kind of like, it seems like they're doing what everyone else is doing right now. And, uh, and what's that? It just seems like they're just, they're trying to be something that they're really not. Um, That's how you really feel about this record? That they're trying to... I think so. I think they're trying to be like, I don't know, trying to be hip when they just should be themselves. I don't know, that's, that's I, see. I think they lost their signature sound. I think they, like, as he said, he, they, they sound a lot like other bands 
they used to have a signature sound that no one else sound that nobody else sounded like, and they, they've lost that. And I think it's just with age. I think they're just having fun with music now, and it's it's not as it's not as, I don't think they're as serious about it. Well, maybe they are serious about it, but it's just I think the main thing is they lost the signature sound. You do, and do you think they had the signature sound on counterparts, or was that the beginning of the end, or? I think they were, yeah. Or do you have a more positive look on? Um, again, that's another mixed one. I mean, starting with like Roll the Bones, it seems they were like starting to head off in another direction. That we're just, I mean, it could be us getting older too. We're just not. Well, that that's too. That, that's part of it too. I see every three albums is is like a a chunk. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so Roll the Bones counterparts and in, in uh, Test for Echo could right. be a chunk of music. Yeah. And then so the next album could be the beginning of the next three. Right. It could be doing something brilliant. Yeah. Who knows? They're, they're a corporate band. I mean, no matter how you slice it. Oh, you think they're shows, a corporate band? Is, yeah, they're clearly. <laughs> I mean, if you go to any of their shows, it seems like everything is just down to the. I mean, everything is just perfectly calculated. Everything is. There's hardly any errors. And, but it's always been like that. It's, well, yeah. I I, I feel that also all. Also better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also better. So. <laughs> it seems, seems like, like two years. When they joined the Atlanta album. Two years album. You know, always a tour. It's like a, it's like clockwork. Yeah. Right. You know, it's it's. Which is fine, you know. It seems like the, it's a it's total business. And, and the last four albums have been kind of formulaic. It's a lot of the songs, that, you know, it's they're very predictable. It just seems like you could after after the first album, the, the three albums that came afterwards, they had songs. And you're talking about the Presto record. Yeah, after Presto, when after Presto seemed to have like shades of Hold Your Fire to it. But when, the last three albums, including this one, it seemed like they had songs on there that were just. It seems like when they got to the recording studio, they said, okay, we need this kind of a song. Let's make this kind of a song. We need this kind of a song. Let's make this. We have to do an instrumental. And I don't know. To me, that's just, it seems very corporate. <laughs> it just seems very pre-programmed and formulaic. And very un-rock and roll. <laughs> and rock and roll. Well, that's not what they're all about. It's, for instance, we're big Marillion fans. I don't know if you're familiar with Marillion, but we've seen them in clubs, and they're just, you don't get that feeling that they're, you know, as corporate, you know, and the music is just perfect. The music, they, they know how to perform. It, I understand. Clearly. But it's just, I don't know, I feel like I'm walking into, you know, sometimes I get the feeling I'm walking into a band at times, <laughs> instead of seeing a rock and roll band. <laughs> is uh, that going to Another thing, too. Yes. They're older, right? They're in their 40s. The music has some great lyrics, some really introspective things going on, but the music that... The, the lyrics has some introspective things going on, but the music itself is not a reflection. It seems like they're trying to do kids' music. It seems they're more concerned with the technology as opposed to like some of the songs. And it's like they have, there's so much technology going on with MIDI and everything like that. It's like it seems like they're concentrating on how to how to use it and how to use it to a song that a, that a teenager might like, as opposed to just writing a song what they feel in their heart and just doing it. They're not as experimental as they may think, make everybody think. I mean, it seems like they try to do different things with this, but I, I think mean, with this yeah. record, they're trying. I mean, maybe they're actually going out and making an effort. Okay, we gotta attract the younger kids, bring them in here. But I mean, there's not gonna be too many teenagers here. I think you know it's gonna be like 20 plus here today. 20 plus. Yeah, I think mean, youngest might be 19, 20, and that's it. <laughs> How do you feel about the merchandising in the past couple of years? When I first started going to concerts, I used to you know go nuts, program shirt. The whole deal. Now yeah. it's just, you know, we're, we're spending 50, 60 bucks for the ticket, which we did. Right. And that's, you know, that's right. our money. We have to pay rent and everything. So I know. We're, just, we're just here to enjoy the show. That's all we can afford. We bring our own food. We can't afford to buy anything in there. And your first names are? My name's Roy. I'm Tim. Oh, thank you much for your opinions. Sure. And uh, you have a good show. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Take care. You haven't been in to see him yet. No, this is my first time. Your first show? Yeah, I'm a Virgin Rush fan. <laughs> <laughs> so is is this your uh, your first album that you've been listening to them? Um, or you've yeah, just been following them? It is. About the new record. I like it. I think it's a little different from their other stuff. It's not like the usual rush, but it's more acoustic. But I like it. I think it's a good sound. It has more acoustic sound. Yeah. And so you can in, instead of electric, you can hear. It's more like guitars instead of like. Drums. Like, there's a lot less drums, a lot more guitar. Right. All right. Have you guys seen them before? Yes. When? When was your first show? In '94, I saw them up north. 
for the Counterparts Tour. And then I saw them when they came here in November for Sports Arena. That was uh, the week of Thanksgiving, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, that was pretty good. So did you have good seats? Were you, were you close enough that you could... Yeah, I had good seats then. I went with my uncle who kind of got me started with listening to them and stuff. And um, we had really good seats because we got there to get tickets real early and stuff. And, but so this time we're just sitting on the lawn because I already know, you know the basic structure. I just want to go in here and play again. Yeah.